Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of the Creative Shuffle with me your host Heidi Odongo and Yadal Golda. And today we are having a special guest. He's a lecturer here at ADMI and we're going to let him introduce himself. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, so my name is Brian Omolo. I'm an illustrator, a digital artist, and I teach a number of subjects in the graphic design department. Okay. Yeah. So um, we Describe to us your creative process. Uh, well, it starts with usually there's like a brainstorm stage. Like a lot of the work that I do mostly is for clients. Um, you'll find there's a certain type of problem they're trying to solve, or there's a campaign they have, or there's a product they're trying to sell, or they want content. So uh, if they've not given a brief, we can have an initial meeting. And then that meeting is when us creatives create what you call a brief. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is what you're trying to go, this is the reason why you're doing this job, this is what you're trying to accomplish, this is the target audience, mm -hmm. this is the goals. You know, sometimes they have preferences in terms of color, style, all those kind of stuff. And then once we've figured that out, then now I go through the whole, you research, you put your ideas down, um, sketch, like I get to a point where I sketch on paper, then I ink it, then I bring it to the computer, add colors and layers and stuff like that, and then it's put together into the finished thing. Yeah. That, that really sounds really interesting. So yeah. how would you rate yourself as a graphic designer? Like percent? Percent or, or out of yeah, whichever. Um, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, every, I think I'm good. I, I like I'm confident in my ability, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess it depends also on whether they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. True. It just depends on what that client wants. Do they feel like my style will fit with them? Mm -hmm. I look at it as have I been honest? Have I been myself or have I put a bit of me into the work that I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And if you're okay with you, um, it doesn't matter if like people like it or not like it. But I do feel like I'm relatively confident in what I can do, yeah. Okay, so let's make this easier. On a scale of 1 to 10, where do ten. you think you are? Uh, <laughs> where do you think you are? I'd like to say... Of course, my confidence might think 10, but I don't want to say 10 because that means I have no room to grow. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, it's hard for me even to pick a number, to be honest. Because there's areas where I feel I'm strong, but even those areas I think I'm strong, mm. you spend a bit of time online, you realize, eh, hey, that guy's also still good. Mm -hmm. What I think is, there's a unique thing I bring that no one else can bring. No one can, like no one can host a show that you guys are hosting this show right now. Yes. So, I am 100% excellent at being Brian. <laughs> right. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, yeah. it does. And yeah. so, like, where do you get your inspiration from? Or what mm. is it that inspires you to keep going and doing what you're doing? Um, I think the journey, it's been a good journey. It's been ups and downs. Mm. But it's always just been growing and getting better. And it's opened up more doors. And I still have a passion and I enjoy what I do. I enjoy the outcome. Sometimes the process in between, there are times when you try things, they don't work <coughs> out. But eventually you get to a place where you're happy with the work you've done. Mm -hmm. You're happy with the, the, the client is happy with the work. And then more opportunities come. So the journey is just, I think, what has inspired me the most. Like the way it just feels like the story just keeps unfolding and more interesting, surprising things come out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always just curious that, okay, next time what else will it be? So that's, that's I think, more than anything. And also your, your people around you, the people you care about, the people you spend time with, your culture, you know, also being authentically African or Nairobian, just um, celebrating what makes you you, that's also something I really like to put, that inspires, I always inspire to put a bit of me and everything that's made me mm -hmm. into the work <coughs> to celebrate where I'm from, yeah. Okay, um, so you've mentioned several stuff at the beginning, you said you're an illustrator, graphic designer, lecturer. So how do you basically deal with tight deadlines? It's tough. <laughs> you, you kind of, I think the most important thing is at the beginning, uh, especially if I'm dealing with clients, like 
I need to be clear on what they need, when they need it by. And if I feel like this situation I can't handle, then sometimes I, I'm open to them that I know you want this thing in a few days, but I need <coughs> like a month or I need two weeks. Mm. But once you clear on that, you just kind of have to plan your time accordingly. I don't get it right all the time. There are definitely people who will watch this and know I've, I've been late a few times, but it just comes down to planning from the beginning, like know how much time you need at the beginning. And then with more practice, you become more clear on your process. Yeah. You no, know, yeah. So those are the things that help me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you being a lecturer and a freelancer, like mm. how do you get to balance the two? Uh, it it also gets hectic, but yeah, it's like kind of like your previous question. You have to, yeah. you have to balance. Like you have to manage your time. Know how much time it will take to do this or that. Um, but. For me, I think they both feed each other in a way. It's like there are times when I'm working on my art and working on my design and clients. Then there's a time when ah, that becomes too much yeah. and you want to now teach. And then there are times when also students become too much. Then you come back to the art. Like the two, <laughs> they both fuel each other. And there's stuff that you learn from your real career that when you bring it to class, you can see these guys are like, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they both like live i liked that idea of um having two places to to draw from not just like one yeah okay um so let's say if you weren't a graphic designer mm -hmm. it will like whatever inspired you to be a graphic designer or at whatever stage you became a graphic designer if mm -hmm. you weren't that what else would you have been or what would you have loved to do I've seen people being asked this question, and I'm always like, hey, what did I say? <laughs> uh, um, I think I'd have still wanted to be in the creative industry in some way or form. If not that, then something where you deal with people, like like counseling or, or these guys who do career counseling. Probably, probably something like that. Yeah, that's the only thing I can, I can think of because <coughs> Most people who, okay, maybe not all, but most people who end up becoming artists, like you can't even imagine doing anything else because it's, it's something I've been doing since even when I was a kid. Before I even knew that oh, one day there'll be Adobe Illustrator or these things or iPads. or So it's been the only thing for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I really can't imagine. But it, it, it would have been nice, something where you have to listen to people and advise them. Yeah. I think maybe that's something else also I could have been able to do. Okay, so what what exactly would you say your end goal is, or what your end goal would be? Um, end goal, end goal, end goal. I think to just continue doing work that I feel is in line with my purpose, like work that just kind of has good positive impact, um, work that celebrates where I'm from, you know, stuff that's distinctly African, but African in a way that I've experienced Africa. Not everyone experiences the same Africa. And I think we just have so many stories that I'm excited to talk about. So um, just, yeah, do more, do more projects, do more work, and uh, hopefully leave a legacy like that. Okay. Mm. So um, I, I get it, like, there are lots of people out there who would very much love to join the creative industry. But they probably know they don't know where to start from, or maybe they're discouraged. I don't know. So, what did you particularly say to them? Um, I think, okay, number one, is it your gift? Like, have you discovered that this thing is actually your talent? If it's your talent, then you definitely should invest in it. Just put in time, and it's really the best time ever to decide to come into the industry because the knowledge is available freely online. Yeah. And there's even more quality knowledge um, on websites that maybe will charge you as little as 1,000 shillings a month, you know. Um, so there's more, there's so many areas in which you can grow your skill or whatever. But I always feel, um, first you have to identify, is it really your purpose or is it just something you like? You saw someone do it yeah. and then you're like, I want to do that without really knowing whether this is something that you're gifted at or something that you're, you're passionate about, yeah. 
So first identify if it's really, and, and that can also come from, from trying it out and seeing how, how that goes. But I think a lot of people are actually good, they're actually talented, and then sometimes they just feel, ah, there's already someone else who's doing it, they're really better. True. But there's just so many avenues um, that you can have a career. I don't, you don't have to be the most successful artist in the world for you to have a happy, fulfilling career. You can have you, your clients, just in this part of the world, and that's enough to pay your bills and for you to have the life that you're happy with. And, and there are also those who could blow up somewhere else. Like there's, the, the pie is big, it's a big pie. There's enough for, okay, sometimes it's not enough, but there's, there's, there's enough for everyone <laughs> to, to, to have something. So you just owe it to yourself to just try and, and not compare yourself to people. Just compare yourself to a version of yourself from back in the day. And I do empathize with people who are starting today because there's just so many ways for you to compare yourselves now. You know, like connectivity, social media, digital has brought good things and it's also brought bad things. Yeah. Like the good thing is um, there's, you can connect with people wherever. You can make a market wherever. Yesterday I was listening to a talk where I think, I don't know if, I don't know if it's Africa or Kenya. The guy, there's a guy who has a YouTube channel where he talks about jiggers, like how to deal with it. And that's like the most successful YouTube channel in Kenya or something like that. Who would have thought that? At your channel talking about something like that, you know? So it just goes to show you how there's such a wide audience of so many things that you really don't know if I create my thing how it will resonate with people and stuff like that. So you owe it yourself to just try and see how it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So according to you doing illustrations, sometimes do you do you just like draw things out of your imagination? Or is it because you've been inspired by something that's why you put it down? It's like a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. Like it could be a certain topic that I'm thinking about or there's a certain message I'm trying to bring out. So sometimes I'll be inspired by something I see in real life, mm -hmm. but then there are times when I'll add in maybe some abstract surrealist shapes. I really love like abstract surrealism. Uh, I don't want to just draw something as it is, and to also add something from, from like my imagination. Or sometimes it's a mix of many many different things I've seen. Mm -hmm. And I think your gift as a creative is how to take all these different inspirations and mix them into something new. Mm. Yeah, that, um, that's, that's, what I, that's what I love to do. I don't think, because um, when I hear you ask that question, I remember a time when I used to think people just sit and there's a blank paper and they just start just drawing drew. a masterpiece. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and I used to be like, hey, me, I can't do that. So I don't know if I can be an artist. Mm. But now with time I've come to see, people look at reference, people study, people look at stuff and then they build their sketches over time. Like mm -hmm. what I was seeing was a finished product but I've not seen the years and years in trial and error mm -hmm. that got that finished product. So once I was removed for the curtain and I saw, ah, Kumbi, there was all these mm -hmm. failures before the success, it made me see, ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So then it's just, I need talent and I need to be ready to work. So, so it's a step-by-step -step process. Yeah, yeah, it made me feel, ah, then it, it's possible. It's not, it's not magic the way I thought, it's just abracadabra. <laughs> it's a method to the madness. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, so ADMI has had a few exhibitions and mm. we know you are part of it. So tell us about those exhibitions. Yeah, so the exhibitions are mainly, um, it's an opportunity for them to showcase their best work, mm -hmm. especially now when you're going towards finishing. Because there's a number of things that happen when you finish a course. One, the obvious one is you're looking for the next opportunity, mm -hmm. whether it's a job, clients, or things like that. But another more important thing is you've just finished a very big you know, stage of your life. You should celebrate that. You should showcase and feel that feeling of accomplishment mm -hmm. that I've finished. Like if you guys were in the film class, you guys finish a short film. You know, if you guys were in the graphic design class, you know, you finished logos artworks, animation guys have worked on, on something. So you should have a day just for you guys, for you guys to be celebrated and also for your friends and family to come and see what you're doing. You know, because sometimes you're going to school, your family is busy doing other things, they never really get to see exactly what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, not well it's the case for most of us many of us when we were starting or when we were going into our careers you know sometimes your parents didn't quite understand mm -hmm. so when you yeah. tell them these dreams of oh i want to do this i want to do this they're like what and they make sense like, I don't know, they're don't nervous. They want to be something more serious than that. Yeah, they're nervous for you because they can't see it. Mm. They, they, you, you can see it. You know, creative people, we have visual imagination. We see it. Yes. So sometimes you need to show them. When they'll come for that show and then they see your work and then they see how people are reacting to your work and they see that, that is kind of what... That's how I got my parents to sort of calm down over time. Mm -hmm. And then they, they trust. They like, they even now, they're like, okay. You, you know what you're doing. Us will just cheer you on from behind. Yeah. At least that's good because you, you know, mm. you have somebody who mm. at least appreciates your career. Yeah. And they support you in every way. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it takes steps mm. to get to that point because my parents have always been very supportive. Like even the schools they chose for me because they saw when I was a kid, I used to pause Tom and Jerry or different cartoons on Club Kiboko. Mm. You pause, you draw. Then your folks notice, hey, this guy, he has, you know, so you can imagine my whole life, they chose certain schools where they knew, even by the time I went to secondary school, they moved me to British system because mm -hmm. they felt that the more emphasis on creativity, which it did, like art from like form one mm -hmm. was super fun, and like that's when I started feeling like, hey, now I'm learning and I'm building myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. But imagine even for them, when I was finishing university and I'm coming back to Kenya, there was a little bit of fear, like, hey, you get the choices you're making. So you just be a boss, at, so you start your own studio, or so you just go to some big ad agency, they'll probably make you creative director. Like, mm. the decision I was making was a little bit nerve-wracking for them, because they've not had that same, you know, you've gone in, your mind is built, you've seen, they've been inspired. Mm. So this can just be that little thing for you to show this is what I've been up to, this is a possibility is what it's capable of and it has a transformative experience like they like you kind of have to um introduce them to this life that you're trying to build for yourself yeah. okay so mm. um that would that basically also contributes to sort of the inspiration behind the exhibition of that sort or um so with the exhibition usually i try to I try to let the students decide, like what, what kind of theme do you guys want? They're the ones who even choose the name. Uh, so it's something that happens at the end of every term. But since we've had lockdown, we've never really had. The last time we had an exhibition was last year, January. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's been unfortunate we've not had a chance to do one. But now we're getting a chance to do it uh, virtually. Um, but it's really more of them deciding what they want to showcase, what they feel their best work is. And sometimes that could be stuff they've done in school, sometimes it's stuff they've done on their own, just random experiments, or it could be stuff they've done for clients. Um, it could be a whole number of, number of things. Yeah. So, so mm. you, sorry to cut you, but yeah. like, is it, um, for example, if a class is having maybe 20 or more than 20 people, so do they like all get to exhibit their work or it's a certain number of people? Um, they all have, uh, okay, I'll be honest. They are all open to take part, but not all of them choose to take part. I've never understood why. <laughs> <laughs> They're all invited. If there's space, you can come take part. But you'll find out of those 20, maybe eight wow. will actually submit and take part. The others, I don't know. Is it because they don't like trust themselves creatively? It could or? be so many things. It could be imposter syndrome, or it could be they're just done with school now. They're not motivated to do anything to do with school anymore. Ah. They want to move on to the next stage, mm. or it could be they maybe they're thinking this show is just for graphic designers, mm. me as a filmmaker, or maybe I'm the guy who handles sound and the boom. What work will I have to showcase in an exhibition? But you see. You can still bring photos of yourself from set, or you can still show us the movies or the videos or the interviews that you worked in, and then you'll say, I was the sound technician for that. And then when people come to that show, they listen to the sound in that video, and they know this is a guy I need to hire. Mm -hmm. you, know, you never know who's going to come or who's going to see that thing and then need you. you know? mm. yeah, you're just trying, just trying this, this is to try and bridge you 
to that person who needs your skill. Yeah, trying to create that experience so that you show them your best, your best stuff. Yeah. Okay. And mm. um, how was like? How did you th uh, think about the first time you started these exhibitions? Like, what mm. was what was your goal? Um, was it to help your students to be able to be recognized by other people, or were you also still giving them a chance to showcase their work? Um, I think, well, when, you know, okay, when it comes to things like teaching, mm. you always want to give people experiences that you think would help transform them in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. And in my life, I've had good education, <laughs> like amazing education, and I've also had very bad experiences with education, mm -hmm. you know, so when I hear people saying, ah, me, I don't care about school school is not for me. I can understand where they're coming from. But in my heart, I'm always like, hey, I'm so grateful. Me, I had fantastic, like, I've had educational experiences that I'm just like, hey, I, like, I'm so grateful to have had those things. And one of those things were definitely exhibitions. There's no school I've gone to, there's no creative school I've gone to where you just finish your course and go. We always showcased our work and it always just felt really nice. Mm. And sometimes that's how you get that confidence of, I'm afraid, I don't think this can work, to now you thinking, ah, okay, now I, I really believe this is possible. And uh, the school also used to have a, a principal back in the day uh, by the name of Lisette. And I remember she used to push each of us, co especially the co-faculty, mm -hmm. like you guys need to have like one project each of you do that can really help the school. So when I was thinking, I was like, ah, definitely, exhibition, that's mm -hmm. the one I want to push. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Tell us your best exhibition experience, whether it's been here in school or out of school. For and me, where my was work? it? Yes. Uh, 2016. There've been there've been a few, mm -hmm. um, but I think my best was 2016. Um, uh, the art space uh, mm -hmm. had opened. Uh, it opened in 2015, so I got to showcase one artwork at the opening. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, they did a show where it featured just digital artists, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember um, my friend who owns the gallery, um, uh, she's been a client and a friend, mm -hmm. was like, I want you to be part of this um, exhibition. It's going to be you and then other talented guys, people like Barbara Muriungi, those um, Musa or Musi, like if you've seen some graphics for Blackets and Wine, Musa. Musa is also another extremely talented guy. So mm -hmm. just the fact that I'm being told I'll be part of these guys, I'm like, yes, I'm inside. You know? Or may make it. Yeah, yeah, so it was really, <laughs> it was dope because I felt uh, finally a space that, like a, a chance for people to see by the these digital artists and this is kind of stuff they do. Mm. Yeah. The lead up to it was very, I know I gave the, you know, like in professional galleries, we have what we call curators and curators are the ones who sort of organize how the show will be. They kind of give you guys a theme and they help you guys develop it and write stories about it. The artist is meant to just create the work and bring, mm -hmm. but a curator guides the artist in terms of, think of it like a producer to an artist. The artist is making music, but the producer is helping you make the sound good. So curators do that. So me, I know I stressed the curator for that art space show <laughs> because, uh, okay, there's a time when you have to give them like, uh, like your sketches and your proposal of the ideas you have. Mm -hmm. I did that quite early. Um, they liked it. They were okay with it. But now as the day for the show is coming closer, when you're supposed to have finished, finished your work and done, they still, I'm still juggling with other freelance staff. And there's a certain project I had which was going to have me travel to Germany for a week. So I'm thinking, ah, I'll, I'll balance all these things. But before I know it, that date, like the, the date for the exhibition is coming. Mm. And then I'm also going to travel for a week. And this is now like two weeks before the exhibition. So two weeks before the exhibition, I have the ideas, but I've not started anything. And to make things worse, I'm about to travel away for a week and it's work. I'm going to go there and work. Mm. So I don't have time to do the work. So I called, I called Don, he's a curator for that show. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm like, hey, don't worry, you are you at that space? And uh, he's like, oh, no, not yet, but I'm on the way there. I do, I do need anything. I was like, hey, let me come see you there. Because this one has to be a man-to-man -man conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you really need it. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm just thinking, I, like, I'm, I, I don't, like, what, what can I do? It's just, time has gone. Mm. I really don't know what else I can do. So I'm like, let me just lay the cards out, plain. Mm -hmm. I'll let him know. So I get there, then I'm telling him, um, I know the show opens in two weeks. Uh, like, I still have the ideas, I still want to be part of the show. But you just know, as of now, I've not started anything. So I'm sure like, that was very pressuring. Yeah, so me, I was just like, okay, but in my mind, I was also, I've always had this thing of, it's going to go the way it's going to go. You know, there are some people who get stressed, and the stress drives them to work and be very organized mm. ahead of time. And then there are those other guys who are just like, it's going to go the way it's going to go. Mm. And then they, they don't let the, like, you can put a gun on their head and they'll still just become <laughs> working. <laughs> I've always had that. I've always had that. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't think so. So I've told him, thing. I've told him, like, the show is in two weeks. I really want to be part of it. I still, you've seen my ideas. But I just know as of now, I've not started anything. And on top of that, I'm flying out tonight uh, for a project in Germany. And I'm going to be there for a week. I won't even be able to work when I'm there. Mm. You know. So I just thought I'd let you know. And whatever you guys decide, I'm okay with it. But just now I still want to be part of it. And yeah. Mm. So he, you can just see the color just drain from his face. He's like, eh. <laughs> but he goes away and he, so he just tells me, anyway, I'll we'll discuss with the team mm. and I'll get back to you, like what we've decided. So so in my head I'm like, ah, if they cancel, it's fine. Because it's their show. It's an important thing for that gallery, especially that time. Um but a few days later, they email me, they say, yeah, we discussed and we felt we'll still give you a chance. Mm. Yeah, you just try and finish as fast as you can. I go to Germany, uh, good experience, but a lot of work. Definitely had no chance to work on anything in Germany. Mm. Come back to Kenya, there's like a day of jet lag. And then I just started working. And then there's that whole craziness of bringing stuff last minute to the gallery. But it opened so well. The way they conducted that show was just done so well. Mm. We even had another day after the opening to just see it and like different people who appreciated the work or to come and see it and ask questions to the artist. Mm -hmm. So it made me see the transformative experience like an exhibition and artists getting to to showcase their work. So there's the opening night. Usually opening night is just fun and pictures and people just excited to see the work the first day. It's more of a social thing. But when they had that other sit down day, where now we get to sit, like fans, people come, the audience comes, and now we get to sit, and the artists are there, and there's like a Q and A, like those those things. Like I I feel I they treated me the best I've ever been treated. I was very happy. Okay. Yeah, it's a long a long answer to the question. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, to our final question, mm. um, do you think this Zuri exhibition benefits the students mm. of ADMI? Yeah, in a big way. Mm. Because um, number one, I always feel like we try to make careers a straight line. Like I'll study graphic design, mm. then I'll become a graphic designer. Then I'll save, 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 you know, pay a mortgage or buy a house. Then mm. I'll, you know, I'll go from designer, senior designer, a director, you know, own a studio or become the manager, you know. But sometimes creative careers don't always follow that linear path, you know. And some of you, you're creatives, yes, but you not be the creatives who one day will get hired. Some of you, optimal path will be to go out there and figure it out on your own. You'll be chattering new paths, mm. you know. Like no one could have given certain people, like, a script for your life would need to go like this. So I feel exhibitions are very important because we may want people to see you for what your work is right now. Mm -hmm. And then now you need to make the decision of connecting with the people who you think are going to help my career progress in the way that I want it, in the way that's best for it. You know, Because mm -hmm. well, you could be talented, but you're not talented for, like me, I knew, um, I'm not the kind of creative who would want to go agency just because the nature of the way I work. Um, that environment 
it will not be optimum for me to express myself the way I want. And, mm -hmm. and that's the same thing I've seen with some students. Their students are very good at film, but their skill is more like give them short films. Give, give this guy a budget, he'll go shoot an amazing short film. Mm -hmm. And then that short film one day will turn into a feature film, and then that will turn into, you know, Something that goes out to the big screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. if you just wait to get hired, you may not get that chance later on to showcase these new, crazy, different ideas that you have. You know? And I always feel like schools are usually the birthplace of amazing innovation. Yes. Like there's so many research papers where you say, they say, oh, the University of Sunderland did a study and they discovered so gee, which antibiotic reacts differently with what, you know, so I'm always like, hey, <laughs> people in university discover this. <laughs> so I'm like, how, when me when I was in university, I couldn't even, <laughs> like I was struggling to figure out how to use M-Pesa, you know, like, <laughs> but someone figured out that he, antibiotic is reacting deep <laughs> because they created an environment <laughs> in school for guys to experiment and try new things, you know, yeah. like, like over here, if it's film, if it's graphic design, You've seen people do logos in a certain way. We've always seen people do films in a certain way. Why not take this time in school, away from the pressures of life and clients and bills, to reimagine a new way that these things can be done? And for some people, you can see their style is a little different from what you expect to find out there. And this can be a space for you to showcase that. But some of you might also just be showcasing work that fits right into industry as it is right now. Uh, so the idea is just, I want people to see you and see what you do and see and see the actual gift you have so that they can decide, yeah, let's take this guy. The dream is let this be a, the kind of event where um, um, ta talent will come, you know, because you know, I get inspired when I look abroad and there's, web, you know, there's schools like RISD, Rhode Island School of Art and Design. Mm. Um, there's art, I don't know if it's called Art Station or Art. I've forgotten the place. Savannah, also School of Art and Design. Mm -hmm. When those guys have, they call them degree shows, huge exhibitions where all the fans, like when they have those kind of exhibitions, the best of the best come to poach their talent. Yes. You'll find, like even where I went to university in UK, when they would have a degree show, you'd find guys like Land Rover coming, Ferrari, all these big companies, Jaguar. Now, okay, the annoying thing was, they were coming to see guys for automotive design. No, <laughs> so they're coming to the art and design department, but they're just going downstairs to see automotive <laughs> design. So sometimes I'll go there and they're like, oh yeah, you like this. But then you can also come upstairs. We're on third floor, we've done some interesting things. You, know? you come and see them. Yeah, so in our like, room of art, like illustration design, me, I'm just seeing friends and parents. I'm not seeing Land Rover, <laughs> I'm not seeing friends. I'm like, bro, just come. Like, we also are good. I know we won't, I won't draw for your car, but I also do for you something nice. You know, and that's when it hit me. Mm. I failed to take advantage of that opportunity. Mm. Like I was so busy, uh, last minute trying to finish things so that the work is there. And I'm happy my work was there, part of the show. It was good. But I could have called guys. Like, you know, when you guys are young, there's a certain boldness. And, you know, they, they say young and bold. Yes. Like youth comes with a certain audacity mm. to um, just ask, you know that after some time you can lose it. So take advantage of that youthful audacity. So you can invite the president. He might, he might come. Or maybe you've seen your ideal client is the MD of Safaricom. And you have this thing which you're just like, if, just, if this guy just sees this thing, maybe that's your ideal client. Mm -hmm. Be audacious and ask them to come. Or the head of some NGO, like British Council or HIVOS, mm -hmm. maybe whatever you have, can connect to those people. So I never really had time to invite any of the people who I feel would be super ideal clients to come to that show. But my friends came and I was happy with the work, that was the most important thing. Mm. And also you're just trying to pass. So at the very least, at least also you make sure you pass. Yeah, so, the, so I think always take the opportunity to showcase your work. Always have that audacity to just invite guys, come, see it. If they don't like it, you're, you've not lost anything. Because even before you didn't have them, now after you don't have them. But someone, somewhere, if you've done your work well, and the good thing you have also lecturers around who can give you the real, like, like may I tell a student, like if I think your work is an A, it's an A. If it's not, I also will tell you. 
-hmm. because I want you to get it to the point where it's it's very very good. And if I'm telling it's good, then there's a good chance that someone out there will also feel mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah. So I just I just feel there's so much talent in this world, like it's insane. It's insane. So the more ways you can create for people to see what you guys are up to and see what you're capable of, it'll just start happening naturally. In fact, now it'll become too much. Now it'll become like too many people are coming for the talents here. So we also now need to figure out another way to make sure it's the right type of people. It's not guys trying to take advantage of you. That will be our problem now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for you guys, your problem is let me do my best work. Let me grow. Let me make creative connections with the people around me. Let me get my work to as best as it can be. It doesn't have to just be yours. It could be stuff you're doing together. Then once that's ready, showcase it. Showcase it. You know, put the stuff out there. You just never know who who will, who will yeah connect to it. So as mm. we almost come to the end of this, I wanted to ask mm. you last question. Do you game? Mm. Are you a gamer? Yes, yes, I game. Uh, <laughs> mostly, mostly FIFA. Oh. Once in a while, adventure games. I really love adventure games. Uh, like the last adventure game I played was Horizon, and then the other game I played before that, which like is still is is probably one of the best adventure games I've ever played. Uh, Uncharted, I think part four. It felt like a movie. Like it reached a point where I was just yeah. like, is this a game or am I now? Like it felt like the, this is the perfect experience because I've been invited to participate in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like it was so well done. Like it was. And that thing just made me realize, mm. by the greatness can't be made alone. True. You know, there's stories, the actors who've written the stories for this thing, script. There's some guy who's doing 3D. There's a guy who did character design. These enemies need to look like this. They need to dress like this. Then there's a whole other department that just colors, a whole other department that does the code. Like there's a department that does marketing. There's like, it takes a whole army to come together and, and just bring for us this masterpiece. Uncharted is a masterpiece like i don't even want them to make this game a movie you'll spoil it <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> like well, you've just yeah. probably made me want to go back and continue because i used to mm. play it but i stopped hey, at some point <laughs> i actually even want to go back and because i don't know okay i remember finishing one but i don't think i finished two and three visuri but four hey Top hey hey, hey. <laughs> I, it even made me now there's another one now that came after that i think four was so successful mm. Okay, maybe the, there's one they did after four now. It was like a spin-off. It was called Lost Legacy, which had, I've forgotten that lady's name. There's a character from the Uncharted um, series that, the the yeah, they did a spin-off of her and some other lady. Uh, and even that game was really good. But I think people bought that game just because they're missing four. Like four left us like, wow, <laughs> we just experienced magic. And even the other games like God of War, really, I really enjoyed God of War. I really enjoyed um, Metal Gear Solid way back then. Ah, that was an amazing yeah, really game. You played lots Driver, of games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Driver. Um, what else? Splinter Cell. I, it was it was a good game, but it was hard. At some point, I just found it so hard. Um, Alex Hunter, the FIFA thing where they introduced Alex Hunter. Yeah, so many love games. I love, but it has to be certain type of games. Like there's some games where I'm just like, oh, nah, it's G World of Warcraft. Like I'm not actually playing. I'm just <laughs> making strategy. And I know I say this is like, they'll come for me in the comments. Mm. Like they don't actually, you know, I used to wonder, hey, guys love this game, let me try it out. So I'm watching guys play, you know, and I've, and I've been at a friend's house where like he just had like a, like he just, we just got a lot of food and guys have just come to hang out at his place. Guys have brought like big expensive computers, Ish. like comps that even have like liquid cooling systems. So I'm like, Where? yeah, this guy's about to put these things together and play a proper game. <laughs> then I'm just seeing, ah, the World of Warcraft, G Dota. Like, <laughs> you're not even the one playing. You just make like a strategy. At this this part of my army, go attack them. Mm -hmm. Then you just sit there, you watch. <laughs> And they are into it like crazy. <laughs> then they are having the time of their life. Yeah, and yeah, like, they're disappointed. And me, I'm just like, ah, like why? Do, do you guys have FIFA? <laughs> no, or do you have like I don't know some? Yeah, I like I appreciate games that put a very good story. Mm. You know, and I do you, play, do you play Call of Duty? Yeah, I also love Call of Duty. 
I hated it for a while, for a long wow. time. Why? <laughs> because of first person shooter. I used to feel uh, I want to see the person. See like Uncharted, you see the oh, person. Oh, the person. Good you see the person. Mm. Uh, Metal Gear Solid. So I used to feel this thing over T. I'm just. just in the uh, I didn't like that. <laughs> then I gave it a chance mm. from Modern Warfare. Hey, mm. hey, even that one is another one. Top notch. Hey, like they make it almost feel real. Like there's a part where in the game and then maybe one of your soldiers die. And then you were there, like emotional, <laughs> banner, like wow, I'm so my daddy. Like they, they make it like a movie, and you're participating in it. Mm. Then also my hand-eye coordination mm. concept for first-person shooter, shooter games was not on point. Mm. But as the game goes on, that's why I also you respect game designers because they have to make this game. Um, like I don't like reading the, you know, there's these people who read the instructions for how to play a game. I don't mm. like doing that. You like, skip. I'll, like yeah, I'm always like I'll figure it out as I'm playing. <laughs> But a well-designed game, <laughs> you'll find that you figure it out as you're going along. Because mm-hmm. the designers have designed it in a way that, uh, as you know, that's why you'll find you keep dying at a certain stage. Because there's a skill you haven't learned. And if you don't learn this skill now, there's like a boss now in stage 8. There's no way you'll get past that. <laughs> you'll get past that. <laughs> so you, now, as you're playing the game naturally, you just get better. Mm. And now also another thing that has come in gaming, which is really super inspiring, uh, for a long time, we just thought better graphics, better speed, better colors. That's the aim to a good game. Mm. But we've seen a lot of games that have come out with amazing graphics and all that. But guys don't like them as much. It just doesn't give you as much an experience. But then here comes Fortnite. You know, mm. like the graphics are not at here, like that crazy. Yeah. You know, it's just like a normal game. But guys are having an amazing experience in Fortnite. Mm. And you realize that. The beauty of Fortnite is that I can connect with people all over on different platforms. You know, there's always constantly this war. Oh, me, I'm a console gamer. Yeah. Me, I'm a PS4 gamer. Mm-hmm. Like, there's wars even in consoles. Like, there's wars for Xbox versus PlayStation. Mm-hmm. You know, and then there's Nintendo guys. You guys are not even in the fight. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then there's wars for PC versus console gamers. Mm-hmm. But I think Fortnite just allows everyone, let's all get together, let's all play this thing. Mm-hmm. So it's made us see, you don't have to make the most amazing graphic game. You just need to think about like the experience. What experience do you want to give the, the audience or the gamers that would be different from anything else? Because mm-hmm. like, when you see videos of some of the most expensive games, it's not even the games with, like crazy graphics or studio. What I'm always just watching, I'm like, I, but if this is the one. <laughs> You know, there are places in US where people pay thousands of dollars to play those arcade games from back in the 90s mm. or the 80s, mm. where you put like a nini kobole, like a and then you play, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> what? Like, there's like a value in nostalgia that I haven't mm. quite figured out, but there's crazy, crazy value mm. in nostalgia, yeah. So, yeah, gaming, man. Gaming is dope. I mm. mean... Brian, you're actually a, a really funny person. Like, true. Yeah. You're, you're very hilarious. <laughs> Plus, yeah. I think uh, we have all learned mm. something, both mm. gaming-wise and mostly on the graphics part. And mm. we're really thankful that you actually mm. made time to actually come. So yeah. is it okay if you let people know about your social media handles or where else um, they can find you? Yeah, so you can find me at O'Brien Studio. That's Twitter and IG. Um, but go follow me on Instagram. Twitter is where I, I yell things I don't want people to know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like people don't know my Twitter, so feel free to speak my mind there. Mm. But Instagram is where I post like my my finished works, but also sometimes process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I also have a, I've put my online portfolio on Behance. Mm-hmm. So if you go to behance.net forward slash Brian Omolo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll also find my portfolio there. And um, yeah, but thanks for that. Um, I think also another part is, you know, for a long time, I spent a lot of time bored in school, um, thinking that I was supposed to go a certain way. Then you grow up, you get educated, and you realize uh, it's not that you're a bad student, you're just bored in that particular situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so don't fall into that lie of, I need to now go into whatever you feel is boring. Like you can stay your fun self. You just need to find the space mm. that will allow you to continue being your fun self. Mm. You know, like I became an artist because I felt it will continue allowing me to have fun as I'm working. Even teaching, like 
it's like I'm trying to focus on adulthood. Kidogo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll grow up and pay bills and be responsible in that way. But I want to come to, like, where else? You think if I went to an agency, I can sit and talk about games. Okay, sometimes amongst the creatives. But there's so many other corporate places where it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yes, concurrently, oh, BBI. You have to talk now, those kind of serious, mature, mature, serious. serious. Things, yeah. I've never been that gay. Mm. So I'm just glad I've found spaces that have allowed me to continue being that kind of joyful childhood uh, creative mm. self. Yeah. And I hope also all of you just find that, find mm. those spaces, yeah, for yourselves. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for letting us know about what the things we didn't know yeah. and Golda do you have anything to say um, well I would just also want to appreciate you for allowing for taking your time to be with us and uh, yeah I've pretty much myself learned something from your experiences and the things you have said yeah. so yeah that's it this has been the creative shuffle I am Heidi Odongo semester for doing digital media and it has been your host, Nidal Golda, doing the same course. And I'm also in semester four. And we thank you for viewing the Creative Shuffle and for hearing us from wherever you are. Please tune in to the next episode.